I think that is a huge part of why I decided to release it after having an internal battle. I mean, daily at, at one point, maybe I shouldn't do this, maybe I shouldn't release it, and this is too honest, this is too much of myself, until I realized that ultimately it was meant for something bigger. It wasn't just about me, it was about other people, and it took a life of its own and became what it is now, which I'm still nervous about, I'm still anxious about, but I think releasing it is a huge healing um, a healing process for me and it's me letting go of that version of myself. I think, you know, being in moments in my life, whether it was my health or personal life, friendships, relationships, I feel like giving myself completely to something is just the best way I can love. But I never wanted the pain that I endured to put some sort of guard on myself, an armor, if you will, and I never I never let that happen because I still believe and I still hope. I hope for love and I hope for healing and I hope for change. And I never want to lose that. Of course, there are days where I feel so far away, but I would rather continue to get my heart broken than to not feel at all. I think at first it's frightening, but I feel like if you surround yourself with people who support you and love you you have to be careful with who you share your story with mm. i think that can be dangerous S sharing something that maybe was really hurtful or sharing a story about your internal struggles to someone who may not be giving you the right advice or um, guiding you another way that will only lead you to more pain is scary so first and foremost i would say making sure you surround yourself with great people. And then I would say, learn everything there is to learn once it's out. Once you say, okay, I'm dealing with depression, then find out every single thing you can about what that means. And when you have a relationship with depression, as opposed to, you know, allowing it to keep sinking in, in, inside of you, it's, it's a little bit more freeing, mm. I think, to understand yourself better. I want to know what triggers me. I want to know why I get depressed and start asking yourself questions to open up yourself instead of, you know, it's easier said than done, though, I should say. But instead of, you know, keeping it in, I find that the biggest reward is letting it go. You said your mom would always say, uh, if you're afraid of something, learn more about it, mm -hmm. and then your fear will go away or something yeah. according to those. She definitely did that when I was younger. I lived in Texas and we were huge with um, the tornado scene. That was what was happening and I was terrified. So I would bring like a cross and I'd bring like a big pillow and I'd lay in my bathtub because that's what I Googled is supposedly oh. gonna help. And my mom would just kind of smile at me and she, the next day, I remember she got me a bunch of books and it was all about thunderstorms and different clouds and formations and all this stuff. And she just, she just told me, she's like, it's not that scary, you know, it's especially when you know that it's just a part of the world. And mm. I, I guess they are still scary, but now I understand what happens and yeah. But I love sweet. how you're applying that to depression. You're applying yes. that to different things in your life. I completely agree with, I mean, my favorite thing um, uh, that I say in the documentary is that I, I have bipolar. I just, I learn how to live with it and I just have made it my friend because that's truly what it can be to me now. To be honest, I've been to four treatment centers and I have a lot of opinions on, you know, rehabs, if you will, or you know, places to go. There's a lot that I don't agree with, but um, what I will say is throughout all of it, learning lessons through dialectical behavior therapy or um, cognitive behavioral therapy, there's something that's always been embedded in me throughout all of those different moments in my life. And that was always to recognize when something was happening to me, accepting it and I think once I realized that this was something that wasn't going to go away, this wasn't something that was going to be fixed by going to these places. Mm. It was more so, what can I know about myself? Okay, if I, if I kind of go down this road, I'm going to get triggered and I know that feeling and I know how to avoid it. 
However, I go to therapy. I also have, you know, medication that I fully am on that I believe in full heartedly and it helps me stay balanced. But I still have to deal with it. You know, I still have days that are pretty low and moments that I'm just too over the top and I'm like, I want to buy everyone a house and <laughs> I want to save the world. Um, but I just have learned to kind of understand it. And the best part about that is also my family and friends learning how to live with it too. They can be great friends to me in that way. And yeah. that took a lot of time as well. I think I, I tend to blame myself when mm. I can't let something go. I feel maybe something is my fault or I should have done more of this or less of that. And it starts to become, you know, just like a really, it, I, I kind of turned sad. Uh, one thing I've noticed when I watched the documentary back for the first time, I didn't even recognize that girl anymore and it broke my heart because I was talking about my body and my image and and I just hate that I ever felt those feelings and I think because I have a younger sister there's been this huge responsibility given to me in a way that has helped me and I say this about my fans as well or or people that have you know grown with me I've almost had to get back up every time more so for them than myself. And that's something I've learned to really understand. It's it's healthy to want to be strong for other people, but I needed to recognize I needed to be strong for myself. And that took a while and it took things like making myself uncomfortable and changing my um, my thought process, changing the things I watch on TV, changing the music I'm listening to, little things that I can adjust that will perhaps change my mood or make me feel better instead of worse, you know. What's it like having to deal with all of this that all of us are dealing with too, but you're dealing with it with an added layer of, you know, exposure? Yeah. Uh, to be honest, I don't know any different. Yeah. That's what's really scary. Sometimes I think that's really sad and other times I just think, well, this is what I've been given and this is the path that I I want to continue to walk in and I know any moment I can, you know, quit and walk away and, you know, that's just not really how I was raised to be. So maybe if it had happened to me later in life, I would have had a different outcome. But because I was raised in it, I, I really had to learn the hard way on how to deal with it, on how to not give, if you will, that clickbait that people want. And I mean, I, I think I do my I do my best to try and eliminate these negative stories or this or Ill, or other people illustrating my journey. It just I interrupt them with my truth, and that's what I will always continue to do. And that's what this documentary does as well. It's it's going it's going to be me taking control of my story, and no one can change that or say any different.